Well, that was weird. Shoot, why did I just take this off? Wow. Well, that was short-lived. Literally just broke. <sighs> and I was so excited. <laughs> Dreams are easy, growth is painful, and balance is key. Hwah! Welcome to Bums on a Boat. My name is Joel, and I am on my 33-foot sailboat, Shock Mate. I have a, a Volvo Penta MD2030. It's a 29 horsepower. When I bought this sailboat, I had zero mechanical knowledge or ability or experience. Um, I couldn't even, you know, change oil on a car. But I have owned this boat for about seven years, and I have learned th <laughs> through trial by fire. And me and this engine, you know, we're 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 good buddies. We're old pals. Very first day, we tried to start it up, and it was a disaster. <laughs> The circulation pump and the thermostat went bad because of this big hunk here. Cooling the system and putting it into the salt water. Now I've been trained by a, a phenomenal diesel mechanic. He, he came in, helped me just totally take this whole thing apart, rebuild it. I've got to watch him. His name is Thomas. For years and years we run commercial charter boats. I mean, we, we've got to be there on time. So we don't have very many new spare parts on the boat. If we buy a spare part, we change out what that is a spare part for because we're replacing something that we know fits the engine and we know it, it actually works. So we put the new part and we proved, yeah, it fits and of course then it works. So then we clean the spare part, which is the used part, up, and then you know you're in good speed for all that. There's no one better to work on, on, on an engine or on anything sailing related, any kind of boat maintenance mechanics. Thomas is at the very top of the pile. What did I learn from Thomas? Uh, well, what's the most important thing to have when you're going to be working on an engine or really yeah, any kind of maintenance? Tools, yes, you, you need tools. Yep, you, PV blaster, very important. WD-40, sure, but but paper towels. Paper towels, yes, I went and bought brand new paper towels. I have more, I have plenty of paper towels. You gotta have paper towels when you're working on an engine. It's the most important thing. That's what Thomas taught me. I came uh, earlier, like two days ago, and I soaked everything I wanted to remove in PB Blaster. That's another trick that I learned in the seven years. Being organized is important. Get everything situated and clean. For me, I've learned that that's gonna help the job to go a lot smoother. Make sure you're comfortable. I got my shade up. I got wind coming in. I got my uh, my little homemade wind sock, wind tent kind of thing up in the Vibra. So I've got air flowing through. I've got my fan. Ooh, I brought water. You know, I got to stay comfortable, hydrated, everything. I think we're ready to tackle this thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's looking, you know, it should be just green, but it's kind of brownish, so that's a little, hmm. Uh, they're all coming off easier than ever before, and that's because I don't think I've ever, oh man, I don't think I've ever soaked in PV Blaster for two days. There goes the gasket. Well, that's the only concern. I mean, I needed to look inside here. I didn't... Part of me didn't want to open this up. Not a huge deal, I guess. I'll figure it out. I mean, the, the, that's just kind of the tough part about cruising is when something, um, <laughs> when you need something, sometimes you, you can't find it. But I kind of wanted to look inside here anyway, and uh, this gasket is gone, done for. It doesn't look too bad in here, honestly. So now I'm like, shoot, why did I just take this off? Uh, but there's actually, you know what? There's there's some gunk in here. No, no, this is a good call. There's some solid uh, stuff in here. That's not good, so. Doesn't taste salty. I don't know what it is, but there's some gunk 
um, in here. So uh, definitely a good idea that I got this off. So I'm going to clean all this gunk out, check the thermostat. If anyone has any idea what what's causing this, it's kind of like gelatin here. Um, the thermostat though actually looks okay. Look at all this. Ugh. Hmm, not really sure. That's salt water getting in here. Kind of appears like it, but how did it get in here? Just a little bit of this, high powered, just to kind of clean off. Got my fresh water, got my carb cleaner. Got my shade, so I'm nice and comfy. Got an alarm going off. I'm suspecting the heat exchanger. That's really the only only place where the salt water can be getting in mixing that I know of. Ooh. Wow, right first glance, I don't see any clogs. So I'm kind of looking through these holes um, and it looks really good. Like there's no gunk in here and that's 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 really, really promising. And there's this little pinhole at the top of this heat exchanger. I guess it's supposed to vent it. It needs to be oriented up, which it was. But this is interesting because this is the only place I can see where somehow salt water would come out of here and mix in with, with our fresh water. There's another way that it can happen, but I've already fixed that. That was a whole saga for like years. And I have a brand new elbow and I don't suspect that's what's going on. Now I'm gonna check the salt water impeller. What I did when the boat was on the hard was I put a hose into the intake and I sucked fresh water into the system so all of this sat with fresh water in it. But since I was in the water I wasn't able to do that. So this has had salt water just sitting in it. It feels nice and bendy and flexible. And all of the little flappers are on. It's nice and smooth inside so Looks good. Looks good. Didn't really need to take this off, but I did. And I have another gasket for this. So now I'm going to have to clean this up, make it smooth, and uh, put a new gasket on here. I got everything nice and clean now, so I'm going to start putting stuff back together. I actually was able to save one of the gaskets, and luckily I had a gasket uh, set here, and I had one gasket in here. So. I have all the gaskets I need on the boat. So I cleaned up the engine. I had my fresh water, sprayed it with fresh water, used the rag, cleaned up the area. So I'm just gonna put everything back together now. We got our antifreeze and now I am pumping out the oil. Well, that was weird. And hey, we got water coming out of the back. That's good. That was so weird. When I tried to start it, it just clicked. It didn't even try to, to start. I was like, what in the world is going on? I thought the battery was dead, the starter battery. But when I checked the voltage, it was over 12, but it was acting like the battery was dead. So I'm like, all right, I got to figure out a way to charge it because well, I can hook it up to my solar by switching, switching this, putting that to both and the solar can charge, it'll charge the starter battery. But then I was like, just like, ah, whatever. And I just turned the key in and it just started up. Well, that was short lived. It was running good. And then I noticed the alternator didn't look right. Um, I thought maybe it came loose up here, but actually the, the bolt broke. It literally just broke. So I don't understand huh why that happened uh yeah that's boat life baby that is boat life kind of an up and down day yeah we uh we i don't know if i had too much vibration or or like if this bolt was just old and somehow i needed to know to just get a new one of these but uh unfortunately it just snapped it right on off there, right off. I revved it up higher just to see it run at a higher RPM and then it just blasted off, so.
that's just life in general. It's not even just boat life. You give it your all, you do the best you can, and then things just don't work out sometimes. So, ah. <sighs> I went to a place called Hubbard's, went to Ace, went to Budget Marine. But look, I found some extractors and I didn't mess around. I got all three different sizes. This comes with a drill bit and an extractor. And I, I'm gonna start with the smallest one. And my idea is like, if it doesn't work for some reason, um, then I can go to the next size up um, without hopefully, you know, ruining this thing, trying to get it out. So I've got these and then I got this other kind of extractor where you drill, you just drill it in and then you hammer this in. So this will be like last resort. If these aren't working and I got some sort of hole, then I'm going to try net hammering this in. So I've got like four options. I soaked it in PB Blaster. Uh, thanks to Pirate Dave for reminding me in the rendezvous. That is a WhatsApp group for patrons and I kind of showed them this is what I'm dealing with and they're like, oh, make sure you soak it in PB right away, especially while the engine's warm because that's just gonna help you to get it out later on. I came earlier this morning and I got like, I got a little hole started in the middle, kind of punched it out and just got something started. I think I got about probably a half inch uh, in. It looks like I'm doing pretty good at staying in the middle. You can see how much of my drill bit goes right in. Keeping it in the center. And I'm just doing it real slow. Keeping it steady and just focusing on keeping the drill level so it's going straight in. And this is actually my first time doing this. The extractors are made um, they're tapered, so they get larger as it goes in, and it actually, it, uh, it's threaded left-handed. So I'm gonna put it in reverse, so it's gonna thread in and then hopefully jam up, and then it's in reverse, so hopefully unscrews it. So I'm getting close to trying the first extractor. You guys, I was so excited, I wasn't filming. I just filmed for like 10 minutes, I was freaking out. I Guys, I showed you the removal. It was first try, I am so bummed guys. It was insane, my my, my pure excitement wore off. I, I didn't push record, but the extractor worked. What a bummer! Golly, it's guys, it's a little tough to film yourself and do all this, I just screwed up. But I, I thought I brought you in and I was showing you, um, but the extractor worked, I got the bolt out. I cannot replicate that excitement. I was so excited! And the good news is I saved the threads. I didn't damage anything. So all I need to do is go get another bolt this exact same set size diameter. And then I got to figure out what caused it to break like that. Here is the hero of the day, the extractor. I mean, these are super cheap. I was looking for some like easy out crazy toolkit. I didn't know you could just go get a, a cheap. It comes with a drill bit and an extractor and it does the big jobs like this. I do believe the problem uh, was that I over tightened the V belt. In fact, I'm like 99% sure because I saw black powder when I was cleaning this area up. I'm like, ah, I don't like the black powder. It must've been too loose. And I, and I just, I, I really tightened it. And also um, maybe the bottom bolt wasn't completely tight as well. I looked up a few different sources to make sure, okay, this is the tension. You actually do want a little flexibility this one guy who's been working on uh, engines for his whole life said you should be able to turn it sideways, both directions, and it should have a little flex. If you over tighten it, you can ruin the bearings and the alternator or maybe break a bolt like I did. Under tightening it, it's not good either, but to me that's going to cause less damage because maybe the belt will slip or maybe the alternator just won't completely charge fully, but it's not going to break a bearing or break a bolt like that. What I did remember is that I just 
changed all the filters because I took this Raycor filter out and it was brand new. And I thought, wait, oh yeah. What, uh, right before I splashed, I had this boat hauled out in Karyaku, which is about six hours sail north. So it's really close. It's part of Grenada, a different island. And right before I splashed, I changed all the filters. Um, so these filters have like 10 hours on them. Also, I need to start it before I change the oil filter um, because you need to start it, get everything warm, and then that helps you to get all the oil out. And uh, so I've still got to find a proper tool. I want to find one with rivets, like a wrench to get this oil filter out. I went and got another uh, type of uh, filter wrench for the fuel filter. I revved it up to high RPMs, which I was nervous because that's what happened when I broke the bolt is I went up pretty high, like over like 22, 2300 RPMs. And then I noticed, boom, it snapped. But I went up really high this time and uh, didn't see any wobbling. Also, what I did is I got like new, brand new lock washers down here and up top. And so I really made sure I got this bolt nice and snug down on the bottom. And luckily I had an extra bolt on the boat because that would have been a whole thing. I had it in my backpack. I was going to go hunting for the uh, right size bolt. And I said, well, let me just see what I got in my spare parts. And I actually had one. The cooling system is working well and nothing's overflowing. I didn't see any leaks at all. I looked for oil leaks. I looked for a... Uh, uh, coolant leaks, uh, salt water leaks around the impeller. I, I see no leaks and it sounds good. Starts right up. So I say big win. She definitely still can use some loving. I'm going to keep loving her. I'll keep loving you. Thank you for watching. Thank you to my patrons for being there on the rendezvous, kind of giving me ideas and encouragement as I was working through this on our WhatsApp group. And, uh, reminding me to soak the bolt in PB blaster right when it broke, when the engine was warm before I left and did all that. Thank you, Pirate Dave, because that I think made a huge difference because when I finally did, whoosh, went to pull it out, it came right out. We'll see you guys next week. If you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. That's gonna let you know when I post a new video and then you're gonna be like, oh, hey, look, Joel's doing something else. And then, you know, you can check it out. This adventure is just getting started you know it's been a long adventure but this is a whole new chapter very uh different you know from whatever you know whatever's happened in the past and i'm kind of swinging for the fences giving her the old one too i'm basically running for a hail mary i'm going about 80 yards downfield and uh, it's gonna be like a jump ball hail mary and i'm giving her all i'm sprinting i ran out of my shoes and uh, i got people hot on my butt but i'm in the lead and i'm just going for the for the long hail mary i have so many projects planned and i have to manage the projects that need to be done because i also want to sail and travel and then the projects that i can kind of do as i'm traveling so there's still a few things to do to get her livable but uh all right, I hope you guys are doing great. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next week. Yeah. These are the tales of Boab.